PHP and with the uh, forms, I should say. It's the forms and the tables. That when you create a form in a table, that form has to be completely within a cell. And the thing is, I saw a few times where it just didn't work. And what what the amounts to it is they actually recommend that you just do not use tables and forms together. Huh. So wherever we want to input data, it's best to not use a form or to use an entire form. So anyway, the bottom line is, yes, it does involve multiple pages, but it's worth it. Well, it makes it easier to understand if you just see some small snippet of code, you know, rather than having all the complexities thrown at you at one time. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so this is what I've got prepared. I don't know if there's any questions about this, or you know what? Now that we've got a bunch of new stuff in there, let's come back to the MySQL and we'll use my name and then we'll select asterisk from my table. Yeah, so you can see that all this stuff that we're seeing it looks like crap in there. It does appear. Yeah. And the other thing, you'll notice the ID, we do not enter that. The ID is handled automatically. And why would I want to have an ID? Because you remember, I had some duplicate records in there originally. If I didn't have an ID, if I said, hey, delete whatever record has, you know, like, uh, what was it? Note, oh, main one, one note. If I took, if I said, hey, just delete records like that, would you delete them both? But this way it only deletes one because I actually picked one of them and it used the ID to know which one. So they use that ID is a unique number that's managed by the system. You do want to use it. So, any questions? Yeah, I, I have a question. Yes. Let, let us say, for example, um, oh, maybe I'm working in a bank. I, I don't. I work <coughs> as a, a writer for a publishing company. But let's say I'm working for a bank and I'm trying to query a field that doesn't have it, isn't in any index. Uh, I'm trying to query the memo field in a checking account. How would I do that? Or could I do that in SQ my SQL? Well, in order to do it in my SQL, you would have to have access to that database, and that database would have to be in my SQL. Well, let's say that I do, or let's say that I let's copy a database no, 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 no. If the memo is not part of the table structure, you can't access it because it doesn't know memo exists. Yeah, I was just going to say that, that. You're saying, like, let's say we did a backup of a MySQL database from your bank, and then you restored it onto your laptop. And then from your laptop, you want to see what's in that memo field. Well, what you'd have to do, remember how I talked about this described table? Uh, no, explain. And then you give it a table name. <coughs> oh, no, I'm not in. Uh, and now if I type, explain my table. I need to tell it to you. There we go. What this will do, um, yeah, you know, I don't even know your name, the answer. The gentleman that asked the question. Yeah, over here, if you take a look, if you're working with the database and 
say you got one from the bank and you want to see where these memo things stored, you would run that command, and then once you run it, you'll be able to see what fields are available. And if you see one named memos, well then that's probably the one. But if you don't see one named memos, there's a good possibility that it's just not there. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, one thing well, that might help is uh, MySQL reads uh, databases according to MySQL protocol. The, your checking account with the memo fields could be in a different, probably would be, in a different database uh, protocol if it refers to memos. So in other words, somebody either has to copy it over yes. into MySQL or supply some translating software, what's called a gateway. Ah, uh, which is yes. something I did for another database. It was a proprietary database, and the gateway was, uh, you know, sending it to a comma delimited file, which would then be read into a standard database. Yes. Um, but what I'm asking is a real problem uh, that does occur sometimes in various fields. Um, and in one case, the answer was, well, we can't do that. Uh, I asked my banker if they could um, look up a record by some field, and the answer was no, we can't, at least not with the current structure. And I'm one person, one, one of their many customers, uh, simply I had to go home and figure it out from my paper records. Sometimes paper records are better than computerized. Just one thing is you can really get out of the database what was put into the database. Garbage. <laughs> and, yeah, if the garbage went in, you're going to get garbage out. Um, but the idea is that, you know, like banks, when they process checks, what they care about is the check number, the account number, the bank routing number, the amount. They'll know who it is. In the, oh, yes, absolutely, the amount. But you know what? They don't really need to know what memo was written. Yeah, but maybe so I do for my own. They don't know, care what you write. My point is, is that the bank database probably will not have that memo. Yeah, yeah. But although, yes, if although you, they have an image somewhere and if they let me look at that image, or if they print it out for me, then I can read it. Yes, yeah, so and now you're adding another twist to this, is that it is possible to store images inside the database. And yes, there are some banks that will let you view your checks online, and you can actually see what was actually written on them. Uh, check 21 was a federal law requiring <coughs> banks to uh, uh, either provide the uh, paper checks returned or they could instead give an electronic image. However, it requires a specified resolution that would be satisfactory for IRS. I have not yet found a bank that complies with that. Do any of you know one that actually supplies images that would be acceptable to the IRS? I don't know that about don't the know. IRS, but they, uh, I'm talking about a community bank that let me actually look at their computer terminal and, yeah, yeah. The images that so far all the banks I've seen return are low resolution that won't qualify, despite the fact that that's been no. illegal for 20 years. Will those same banks let you have your paper? Pardon me? Will those same banks let you have your paper checks? No, I haven't, it's been years since I've seen a bank no. that let me have no. paper checks but they were allowed to not give the paper checks if they instead, uh, it was, it's called, I think it's called Check 21, it was a law that was passed uh, shortly before the end of the 20th century. Um, it allowed them to uh, have the option of uh, supplying you with an image instead of the paper check, provided the image meant, uh, met an ANSI uh, specification, which, as I said, none of them have met that I've ever seen. 
far as I know, the imaging requirement wasn't to the end user. It was the, the, the check to be scanned, the original destroyed, and the image used to complete the processing from bank to bank. I don't the remember any reference to the end user. The law said it was supposed to be available to the end user. That was a requirement for them not to give you the paper checks. Because, that, because checks are used for tax purposes. That makes sense. Because and the IRS won't accept the low resolution uh, well, copies. Well, you check. Yeah, but did the law specify that it had to be a high resolution for the user? Yes. But not the yes. IRS. Where's the FBI? We got the FBI. Yeah, not the bank's pocket. No proof it actually got cashed. <laughs> Unless okay. you actually get that piece of paper back. And that's the reason that the banks would always return you your check, uh, you know, 20 years ago. But then when they said, hey, you know what, cost money to process paper. Let's just take an image. And that's what Dr. Bob was referring to. He yeah. said, well, if you can do the image thing, you have to make that image available to the customer in lieu of the piece of paper. But I haven't found a bank yet that's complied with that law in 20 years. You probably uh, my, my guess would be to get the to get anything better than the online image, you have to ask them for the image separately. I have. The, the banks insist that their low resolution images will satisfy the IRS. The IRS disagrees. Mm -hmm. And the banks, of course, uh, said, oh, well, we say it's fine, so we don't care what the IRS says. And well, the, the IRS, banks have the money. The IRS money. collects money, but the yeah. banks have it. And keeps it unless you can uh, get that high-resolution check. Okay, so that sounds like an inter interesting tangent. Uh, do we want to talk some more about uh, Carl's presentation here? I've, I've got the camera running. If anybody has anything, comments? Yeah. Well, I have the, had the privilege when I was in college to work in a item processing department in a bank in San Francisco. Really, really neat. Uh, you know, you can, you can uh, dispute whether they give you the high resolution or low resolution, but. I had the privilege of actually handling the checks. Okay, well, Carl, thank you very much for your presentation.